Hi, welcome to a new video of 1D6. My name is William. Today we'll be handling the setup of ISS Vanguard. Be aware that the video will be primarily about the shipbook, since we will stop just before landing on a planet. As you have probably seen by now, this video is on the long side. Sorry in advance. Landing on a planet, planet exploration and returning to ISS Vanguard will be handled in a different video. Before we continue, don't forget to leave a like, comment or subscribe. And now let's get started. For this setup, we will need the following components. A shipbook, a systems map, the awaiting envelope, lander boards, the planetary scanner, the double-sided danger dice reference card, the game round and dice check reference cards, also double-sided, game trays A and B, the black and the white one, the section compartments, these five tokens, mission failed, start, one action and two action left, penalty and turn available of turn not available, the command, energy, success and time tokens, 12 injury dice, two danger dice and one d10 dice, four rank one sleeves from each of the four sections, four minis with their responding section colors, four crew tableaus, a save sheet for the end of the game, your token bag, these cubes which you can use for all kinds of things, your logbook or ISS Vanguard app, your rulebook of course, and whenever you're starting to play the Planetopedia. Don't forget to take a breath once you've picked it all up and set it on the table. When you've done that, it should look something like this. It doesn't matter with how many players you play, all four sections must be on the board. So as you can see, my shot is pretty cramped. I had to get it all on camera and yeah, well, the camera view is just too small for the whole table. So I had to put everything a little bit too close for comfort. So if you haven't saved your game yet, as you can see, I haven't saved a game yet, you should start with the awaiting envelope. Take the planetary scanner from the awaiting envelope. I have already done that for the setup, but it should be in your awaiting envelope. Take any success, command or energy tokens from this bag. Since this is your first game, you probably won't have any of these components in this bag. Then take the awaiting envelope and take all crew members out of the awaiting envelope. You've probably already played the tutorial, so you would have some crew members, though I have way too many for now. All right, let's continue to ship page two. As you can see, I've already filled this piece of the map pretty far. But when you start the game, you should have an objective card, a tech level card and a morale card. If you have any bridge upgrade cards, you should get them out of the awaiting envelope and socket them in here. If you have any cards with bridge upgrade travel, place these cards in page four. If you need to insert a card on a place where there is already a card, remove that card and place it in tray B. Next, generate command pools, like here. According to the number of command tokens you have on your objective card or you have already stored, like told before, and your energy pool, like it says on your energy card, so I'll be taking four, but in my case, I already have a bridge upgrade, which allows me to get one extra. If I had a penalty token, which you get from being adrift, I would need to place this one here and it, it would allow me only to have one command point. You should also check your morale card. A positive morale has positive effects on these pools 
a negative morale has the opposite effect. Check situations. Take all situation cards out of the awaiting envelope and place them face up nearby. Resolve the effect text on each situation card in any order. Do not discard the card unless their effect instructs you to. Once you've done that, reveal a new situation. Every objective has a number of situation cards you'll be needing to draw. In this case, we'll only be needing to draw one situation card. In this example, we've drawn this situation card. We will place the situation card here. We do not resolve the effect of the situation yet. Next, we will prepare the planetary scanner. Return the landing card in the planetary scanner to tray B. In this case, there was no landing card in the planetary scanner, so we can skip this phase. Then go to page 5 of the star map. Open the system map books on the page indicated by the current system bookmark. During this step, you will perform any of the following tasks in whatever order you want and as many times as you want. This step ends once you've placed a landing card in the planetary scanner, you are unable to perform any other task or you choose to end the step. Fly to a new system. Choose a new outbound system from those listed and pay the listed energy cost. If there is a log listed next to the system, read it. If no log, open the new system map and change the bookmark. There's a hint too. You may always listen to log 999 to track which systems and planets you've already visited. And in this case, we have four outbound systems, as you can see here, with their indicated energy costs. And in this case, there's a yellow marker, so there's probably a reason why we can't travel there, but those blue ones we can travel to. We can visit a destination within the system, choose a destination listed in the lower half of the page and pay the listed energy cost. Follow the instructions next to the destination, including reading any logbook entry. Those are these. If the destination has a shuttle icon, take the listed landing card and place it in the planetary scanner so the information about the planet is hidden. This will end this step. If the required landing card is gone, you cannot land on that planet. If you end this step without a landing card in the planetary scanner, you are considered adrift. When you are adrift, you lower the morale by one, place a penalty token in the command pool, go to page 39, save point and continue from there. Say for example, we are going to Brimstone. I've put the Brimstone card in the planetary scanner. Traveling to Brimstone costs us zero energy, so we'll keep this one and we can read what the planetary scanner asks from us. In this case, to read the first hint, we'll have to pay zero energy. That's no problem. To read the second one, we can pay one energy. That is no problem, we can pay that easily. And to read the last one, we again need to pay one energy. We'll do that as well. Now that we've chosen a planet to go to, we can close the system map and we should go to page six of the ship facilities. Choose one of the five possible locations. When starting, the add-on facility is locked. Next, we have ship management cleanup. Discard any energy and command tokens remaining in the pools. Place any success tokens remaining in the pools in the token bag. And go to page 18. We will get there soon. Let's go over the rooms listed above in more detail. The research laboratory. If you want to use this page, spend one command token. Take all research projects out of the awaiting envelope and insert each into an empty slot on the page. If there are not enough slots, return any remaining research projects to the awaiting envelope. In my example, I would have one research card, which I could fit in here. The next thing you can do is complete a research project. Pay the discovery cost of any one research project on page 9 and take the card from its slot. If there are any research projects on page 9 that share the same keyword shown on the top right of the card, you may pay their listed discovery costs to take them from their slots. So in other words, in order to research this project, we need two mineral discovery cards and one alien tech discovery. To have these discoveries, you should have already gathered some discoveries. In my case, I have some gathered discoveries, which I can show you here. 
So in this case, I need to pay two mineral discoveries. I have two mineral discoveries and one alien tech. If I would do this, this card would have been researched. You can also boost your research. All crew members have an icon on their cards. If the slot you want to boost has an icon which matches your crew member, you need to place this crew member in resting. And you need one more crew member, as all boosts need two icons. Be aware that you still need to pay the discovery costs. You can repeat this step as many times as you like. Just remember that you always need one crew member from each command section so you can continue the game. If this was your last command point you could spend, go to page 18. If not, go to another section. Page 13 is where production projects are ready for production. On page 14, the top row is for upgrades. The two remaining rows are where the production takes place. Though, you need an upgrade card for the second row, as you can see in this case. The first thing you can do is gain new production projects. Take all production projects out of the awaiting envelope and insert them into an empty page on the production slot on page 13. If there are not enough slots, return any remaining production projects to the envelope. The second thing we can do is install production upgrades. Take all production upgrade cards out of the awaiting envelope and insert each into a production upgrade slot on page 14. Next, we can progress current projects, move all production projects in the production queue slots on page 14, one slot to the right. Whenever a project moves right from a stage 3 slot, take the card, flip it over, resolve its text and remove it from the game. So in this case, it would have been produced, we can get equipment and a production project. And I won't show this one for spoiler reasons. We can also start new production projects. Choose any number of production projects on page 13 and place them in their listed starting slots of any available production queues on page 14. So if I would have any ones here, which I could have inserted out of the awaiting envelope, I can immediately transfer them into a production slot. For the example, in my case, I have some production cards. So I would list them here. I can now move these from here and I would need to insert them. This is a stage two, this is a stage two, and this is a stage one. I also have another project, which is also stage two. Since there are no more available stages two, I can still place this one, but I could only place it to the left of it. In the production area, you can also boost your production. You can add crew members to speed up production. You need to match the icon on the crew member card with the production card and put that crew member in rest. Same disclaimer as before. And in that case, it would only travel one space further. And again, if this was your last command point you could spend, go to page 18. If not, go to another section. So next, we have the barracks. We can transfer or dismiss crew members. Players may transfer available crew members between sections on a one-for-one -one basis. To do so, exchange the rank sleeve of each traded crew member for a rank sleeve of their new section. A rank 2 or 3 crew member loses one rank when traded. So we could trade these two between sections. We would remove their sleeves and both would be a level 1. Resting crew members may also be traded. When doing so, place the crew member back in resting. Players may also dismiss any available or resting crew members. To do so, remove their crew member from their rank sleeve, return the sleeve to the section compartment and place the crew member in recruits. The second thing we can do is train recruits. You may assign one available crew member of rank 3 to train recruits. For each assigned crew member, you may promote one rank 1 crew member of the same section to rank 2. Place both assigned crew members and the newly promoted crew member to the resting crew. We can also draft new crew members. Take five random cards from the recruits and place them face up nearby. If the current morale is high, take six instead. If the current morale is low or very low, take four cards instead. If there are not enough cards, take as many as you can. Then, in an order chosen by the security section player, 
Each section chooses one of the revealed crew members, placing them in a rank 1 sleeve of their section and adding them to their hand. Return any crew members not chosen back to the recruits. If a section has no rank 1 sleeves remaining, that section player may remove an available rank 1 crew member from their sleeve, return the sleeve to the section compartment, place the crew member in recruits, and then use the sleeve for the new crew member. 4. Choose your next facility, you know the drill by now. On page 17 we will find the situation room. If you've chosen this action, apply the when solve effect of one situation card above the shipbook. If an effect requires a choice to be made, the security section player makes that choice. The next thing we can do is to solve additional situations. You may assign one or more crew available crew members to be supervisors. After assigning crew members, apply the when solve effect of one situation card above the shipbook. You may repeat this entire step any number of times. As last, you can choose the next facility. And again, a reminder that every section has at least one available crew member. On page 18 we will find the hangar. Take all lander cards out of the awaiting envelope and insert each into an empty slot on page 19. Note, if all lander card slots are occupied, you must either remove the new lander card from the game or decommission one of the existing landers. To do this, choose a lander on page 19, except for the basic lander, and remove it from the game to make room for a new lander. Next, we can install lander mods. Take all lander mod cards from out of the awaiting envelope and insert them into empty slots on page 21. If there is no free card slot there, you may empty slots first by removing any current slotted mods from the game. Next, we can repair landers. If any of the lander cards on page 19 is face down, you may pay the repair cost to flip the card face up. In this case, one mineral discovery. Choose a lander after reviewing the information on the revealed sections of the landing card in the planetary scanner. Decide which lander to use for your next planetary exploration by choosing a face-up lander on page 19 and taking the corresponding lander board from the box, placing it nearby. Customize the lander. Choose lander mod cards from page 21 and place them in empty slots of the lander board. Max one per slot. There are two mod types, structural and utility. You may only place mods in the lander mod board slots of the same type. So here we have a utility upgrade card. We could place this one here. And we have a structural card, which we could use. Uh, spoiler alert, I would do this because it says landing, more shields are advised. We will move on to page 23. Record your current planet board. We'll skip this one for now. Clean up the board. Since we believe this is your first game, skip this one. Prepare the away team. The information on the revealed part of the landing card in the planetary scanner may provide you with information about what awaits you on the planet. Use this information to assemble the right away team for the mission. Each player selects one of their available crew members to take part in the away team. If playing solo, you must select at least two crew members from different sections. Return any remaining crew members in player hands to the resting crew. Each player then takes a crew board for each of the crew members in their away team under their control and places each crew member on their own crew board. Each player fills their crew boards with the section dice from their section compartments following these rules. Section dice may only be placed in the matching color slots. Slots depicting a rank are only available if the crew member is of that rank or higher. If you have more section dice than available empty slots, choose which dice to use. Any remaining dice are placed back in the corresponding section compartment. Next, we will prepare the planet board. If there is a planet record sheet for your current planet in the recorded planets, start at step 1a. If not, start at step 1b. In this case, we will start at step 1b. Populate the right side of the planet board with the indicated unique discoveries. Each section player creates a section deck of at least 10 cards from their section cards. Only cards that have a rank equal to or lower than the crew member may be chosen. Each section deck is then shuffled and placed next to the corresponding crew board. Place the indicated number of markers in the charge slot of each crew board. Load the lander, 
Take all equipment cards from the armory and place them face up on the table. Each crew member in the away team choose one small equipment card and place it next to their crew board. Then choose a number of personal and mission equipment cards up to the limit depicted in the load section in the top left of the lander board. You may also take any number of mission equipment upgrades from the mission equipment cards that you have chosen. Upgrades do not count towards the lander equipment limit. If players are unable to agree on a choice of equipment, the engineering section player makes the final choice. Place the chosen equipment cards in a pile next to the lander board and return the rest to the armory. Note, equipment that depicts a section icon may only be used by a crew member of this section. Place a marker on the appropriated space of the supply track. The highlighted space in the supply track is the base number of supplies the lander has. The number of supplies and lander equipment limit can be modified by the lander mods on the lander. Strap in. Check the upper part of the landing card. It contains the number of the log with a briefing. Go to this entry in the logbook and learn the details of your mission. Then perform the landing sequence of the planet described in the logbook. Once the landing is complete, the instructions will guide you back to the following part of the shipbook if necessary. Okay, so we know that was a lot to handle. That's why we made timestamps for you to be able to quickly look back at parts of the video where you might be struggling with the rules. If you have any questions or you feel like we've left something out, let us know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.